Today we're going to be talking about the process of migrating to Microsoft Dynamics 365 from any ERP or finance solution you may be on today. We're going to talk about the benefit or what to expect in Microsoft Dynamics 365, some of the high level benefits of Dynamics 365 compared to either limited or on-premise ERP solutions. And then Diane is going to walk us through what the ERP migration process looks like. Um, how that works with turnkey technologies and uh, some tips and tricks for that as well. So if you have any questions today, please do feel free to ask them. We are going to get those answered at the end in a Q&A session. And also we are recording this webinar, so we're going to send that out to you afterwards in a follow-up email, which will also have a link to our free um, ERP fit gap assessment, which is a consultation that we'll talk about at the end of the webinar if you're looking at migrating to Dynamics 365. Um, so just a little bit about Turnkey Technologies. We are a Microsoft Gold partner. Um, we are located in St. Louis, Missouri. We were founded in 1994, um, 25 years ago, as a Microsoft partner. We have basically focused our entire business around helping clients adopt and maximize their use of their Microsoft business solutions. Um, that started as Dynamics GP um, earlier on when it was first acquired by Microsoft. And we have since evolved fully into a Microsoft Dynamics 365 solution partner, which includes uh, finance and operations, business central, um, customer engagement applications, and Power BI as well. Um, so our main goal is to help our clients adopt Microsoft business solutions, as we said, and also get a clear ROI from those solutions. And so we're happy to provide webinars like this to sort of inform the community and help uh, open any doors to either questions they may have or maybe spur some thought around um, how they're going to implement this solution in their organization. So again, do feel free to ask questions. We're happy to help. Um, and I just want to preface this webinar with, um, while we are going to be going through the steps of the ERP migration process, I do want you to keep in mind that Turnkey will be working with you every step of the way as we explain these. These aren't, it may sound a little bit intimidating as we go through them, but just know that this is not something that you'll be doing on your own. We would be guiding you and working with you through all of these steps uh, of the migration process. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, what to expect in Microsoft Dynamics 365. So when you're migrating to Dynamics 365, and this is especially true if you're migrating from an on-premise ERP solution um, you're going to gain significant benefits not only from the cloud deployment model of the solution itself, but from features offered in Dynamics 365 that aren't offered by other ERP solutions. Um, you're immediately going to gain the improved security, privacy, and reliability thanks to the highly secure state-of-the-art data centers from Microsoft. Um, in most scenarios, the level of security you gain from Microsoft's data centers is much greater than what a small or mid-sized business can afford to execute on their own. And so since these, since the security is shared across resources, those savings are passed on to you um, as well as all the benefits of that security. Um, you're also going to gain the scalability and flexibility to support your business growth when you need it um, without the costly changes to your IT infrastructure. So not only does this include seamlessly deploying computing power when needed to handle high traffic volumes or heavy reporting, but also adding additional functionality on the solution, as well as adding or removing users from the solution as needed. So since you're not purchasing these licenses, they're per, uh, subscribed to on a monthly basis, and you're not tied down by an annual contract, you can turn users on and off as needed. Um, you're also going to have the ability to truly bring all of your data together by uniting ERP and CRM. Um, if your organization wanted to deploy Dynamics 365 for sales, customer service, marketing, field service, or project service, these modules are all operating on the same common data model as your Dynamics 365 ERP applications, and they're seamlessly interwoven together, so you really have one experience across everything, and you can truly initiate end-to-end -end processes and get a complete view of your customers. Um, additionally, Dynamics 365 integrates completely with Office 365, which provides a single user experience across all your applications, as I just said, and it enables you to automate your processes between your applications um, and also execute them right from where you're working. So let's dive a little bit more into the unique benefits of Dynamics 365. 
Um, first and foremost, Dynamics 365 offers comprehensive ERP functionality to manage any area of your business, which includes finance, supply chain, manufacturing, projects, HR, retail, business intelligence, and reporting. Um, the solution does offer right size options, however, so organizations have the option to just get the functionality they need or bundle their licenses to um, additional applications for increased savings. And we're going to talk about the licensing more in just a second. Um, what makes Dynamics 365 unique from other ERP solutions is its seamless integration with Office 365 as well as its similar look and feel. Not only is the solution easier to adopt for users already familiar with Office 365 applications, but it enables them to harness the capabilities of Office 365 with Dynamics 365 and vice versa. So for example, users can create quotes, process orders, and submit invoices without ever even leaving Outlook. And in fact, the AI available in Dynamics 365 can even enable it to scan your emails, identify a sales order request, populate that sales order request based on the information in the email and set rules by your organization and even add the recipient's contact information as well just based on the email. It also seamlessly integrates with Excel which enables you to um, not only have a live connection back to your database for refreshable reports but also allows you to export your data into a spreadsheet, make bulk changes to those records and then re-import it seamlessly without any technical involvement. And of course, you can easily create professional looking customizable quotes and invoices directly into Word, as well as many other integration points with Office 365 that are all available contextually and right where you're working in Dynamics 365. Um, you gain the ability to embed easy to use analytics from Power BI. Now I'm sure everybody's aware that we're living in the age of data where there's just more data to be consumed and put to use than ever before. Um, yet many organizations still don't have very adequate reporting and analytics tools throughout their organization. Um, some of you may or may not be familiar with Microsoft Power BI, but it's essentially Microsoft's self-service analytics solution that connects your data from virtually any source. Um, that could be your ERP solution, CRM, spreadsheets, third-party solutions and databases, you name it, and allows you to easily create and share visualizations of that data across your organization. So one of the great features of Dynamics 365 is the ability to embed Power BI directly into the application and um, directly onto your records and dashboards, which provides you easy to view uh, data visualizations of what you need to see and where you need to see it, depending on where you are in the application. Um, so one of the main benefits of any ERP solution is business process automation, um, but many solutions today fall short due to cumbersome integrations or difficult customizations to make it actually happen. Um, with the Microsoft Power Platform, which consists of Power BI, Power Apps, and Microsoft Flow, organizations can easily build workflows and extend them to other applications to connect any business process end-to-end. -end. Um, the Power Platform allows organizations to easily manage these workflows and extensions with no complex coding required. So what it does is essentially puts the power to create workflows and automations in the hands of the non-developer users who are familiar with the business process requirements and can translate them into a workflow that works for their part of the organization without having to involve IT or a developer in the process. Um, so Dynamics 365 is designed to be easy to use and adopt. And so in addition to the familiar look and feel of Office 365, the solution is simplified around workspaces, which are views for everything any role might need to do its job. Um, which includes important metrics as well as actions to be taken on those. Um, but you can also view the entire solution by each individual module and functional area and drill down into it from there, if that's preferred. So where some ERP solutions, especially legacy solutions, offer an extremely complex or outdated user experience, Dynamics 365 is designed from the ground up to be powerful but easy to use. So let's take a look at the two flavors, if you will, of Dynamics 365. Um, if your organization is looking at migrating to Dynamics 365, you really have two flavors to choose from. It's Business Central and Finance and Supply Chain. Um, you may be familiar with the term finance and operations. That's how finance and supply chain was licensed prior to October 1st. Um, the main differences between these two solutions 
are their size in terms of the breadth and depth of their functionality, their deployment options, and of course their pricing. Um, Business Central is designed for small to mid-sized businesses that have outgrown their limited finance or accounting software. So there are no user limits, meaning you can have as few as just one user on the solution. And it's designed to be easy to implement and manage with, multi, with the multi-tenant cloud deployment. Um, however, because it is a multi-tenant cloud solution, it limits the options to uh, the, there's a limit to which you can extend the solution and customize it. Um, you can't customize the code since that is shared across different tenants. Um, the upgrades and data center security are all handled by Microsoft, letting you stay focused on the application functionality and running your business rather than on the technical and administrative aspects of the solution. Um, and that said, the solution is highly configurable. So while you can't customize the code itself unless you have the on-premise uh, on option, which is available, um, you can highly configure and extend the solution, especially using the Microsoft Power Platform, as I said. Um, so looking at the finance and supply chain side, which, uh, as I said, prior to October 1st was licensed as finance and operations, um, it's Microsoft's most robust ERP solution and is designed for mid-sized to larger businesses. So while both solutions offer comprehensive functionality to manage the different areas of your business, um, finance and supply chain offers significantly deeper capabilities across the board. It's capable of handling even the most complex of financial structures, um, and business processes, and it offers deep multi-currency and multilingual functionality for global operations as well. Um, because it's deployed a uh, single tenant in the cloud, it offers larger organizations the control they need to actually customize the solution and change the solution's code in order to achieve their business process needs. Um, additionally, it offers larger organizations full control over their security and the ability to fully isolate sensitive data in a highly regulated industry. Um, just like an on-premise solution, it's got its own uh, virtual machine and it's totally isolated from other instances of the software. On the flip side, managing the maintenance and security of your solution typically requires a little more skilled IT staff to keep it up to date. But it is important to understand that with finance and supply chain, while it's a single tenant cloud solution, it comes with application lifecycle services which greatly simplify the management of it and essentially create a multi-tenant um, cloud management experience for the end users. So while both solutions are designed to take full advantage of Microsoft's cloud, they also offer the option for on-premise deployment, which of course grants you the same control over your maintenance and security as a traditional on-premise ERP solution. Um, so the licensing for Business Central, when it comes to the licensing, even after you've chosen which solution you're, good, you're a good fit for, um, you can still size that solution to the perfect fit for your business. So in Business Central, you can choose between Essentials and Premium. As you can see on the left there, um, Essentials offers everything you need to connect financials with supply chain, warehouse management, project management, HR, and basic sales management. Um, but if you're a manufacturing organization or have service management needs such as job scheduling, you may want to bump up to Premium, which offers everything in Essentials plus manufacturing and service management. Looking at finance and supply chain licensing, um, it's a bit different than Business Central. In this solution, you can choose a base license and then use an attached license for additional functionality that you may need, um, which greatly saves on your licensing for that as you bundle them up. So the finance license offers comprehensive and deep functionality related to anything accounting and finance, while the supply chain license offers comprehensive, deep functionality for all things supply chain and manufacturing operations. Um, if your organization does not use manufacturing or inventory management, then just the finance application may be a good fit for you. However, if you need the full financial and manufacturing solution, you'll simply choose one as the base license, the other as the attached license, and um, combine them for a total of $210 uh, per user per month. I provided a couple basic examples on how that works just to illustrate that there on the slide. Um, also note that the CRM applications in Dynamics 365 work the same way. If you choose a base license here, you can add on sales, marketing, customer service, and field service as an attached license um, for only a small incremental increase in the overall licensing price. Um, to learn more about the functionality offered by each of these licenses, we would be happy to walk through that with you in a no obligation, no charge consultation, which we will discuss um, at the end of the webinar. 
So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Diane, who's going to kind of walk us through the ERP migration process and what that looks like, as well as give us some tips and tricks. Diane? Hi, everyone. All right, so the ERP migration process, um, like Brad said earlier, we do um, work hand in hand with you guys as we go through the entire migration process from your current system to your new um, Dynamics 365. High level, um, we go through several different stages of a project for the migration process. We start out with planning and discovery, then we do um, some design, and we're gonna dig into these a little bit further here. Um, then we do some training. We turn the system over to you guys to do a lot of testing and um, reiterate the training that we've done. And then we deploy the live version of the software. So the planning and discovery phase, um, we identify your current as-is processes. So what are you guys currently doing in your current software? And then we also define um, what processes, you know, the, the future state, if you will. Um, we go through functional and stakeholder requirements. So obviously, if we're replacing your ERP software, um, we want to make sure that everything you guys are currently doing, you're able to do in the new system, of course, with some enhancements and, you know, more functionality. Um, we also go through uh, technical requirements. So if there is any uh, customizations to the system or um, integrations with, you know, other products that you use um, that would come up during our technical requirements. We put together a budget and timeline and um, we manage to different project milestones. So um, throughout the process, we keep you updated where we are budget versus actual, um, you know, what tasks and, and pieces of the project have been completed, what um, what's coming up next. And then we also talk about KPIs and metrics for your return on investment. So, um, you know, obviously um, switching softwares is, you know, is a costly endeavor. And so we want to make sure that you are getting a good return on your investment. So, so the design phase, after we go through our discovery, um, we design. So we create production and test environments. We install and configure any ISVs, which are the add-on products, um, you know, to the system. We migrate data. So data that we migrate, we bring in chart of accounts, customers, vendors, items, um, for the live deployment, we'll bring in, obviously, um, item quantities, open receivables, open payables. So that's typically what we bring in. And then um, some GL history so that you can do some um, comparison financial reporting if needed. Um, so, and then we create integrations to any outside systems that you have. So that all goes on during our design phase. Once we complete the design phase, we move on to training. So we train, um, we call them power or super users. So we train them um, on not only the you know, we, we typically train them on the fun, full functionality of the software so that, you know, you guys have some good knowledge in-house after the project is done. Um, and part of the super power user training is we review the configurations and the data that we've imported in to make sure um, it all looks good and is what you were expecting. And then we train on the problems. Secondly, we train end users. This is a little more specific. So we will train them on your specific processes that we've defined 
for them. So end users get a little less training. It's more specific to their roles and, and jobs and tasks in your organization um, because we find that some people do better when they're um, limited in, in, you know, what we train them on. We don't want to give them too much. People tend to get overwhelmed or confused sometimes. Also keep in mind, this is an important part of the project because re research has shown that um, in order to really become proficient in a new software, a company um, should invest 1,500 hours um, over the course of the migration to really get up to speed and have a smooth transition over. So 1,500 hours sounds like a lot. Um, obviously split amongst a group of people and breaking it down by month, it becomes a little bit more manageable. But it is um, obviously an important part of the process as we hand things off later. So once users have been trained, we turn the system, the test system over to you guys. And this is really what we like to say is your chance to break the system. Let's go through, you know, you take a stack of um, inventory transfers, you take a stack of uh, payables invoices or, or, you know, POs and run them through the system to the entirety, you know, PO to, to cutting a payable check or, you know, on the sales side running through a sales order all the way through to a cash receipt. Um, again, your chance to break the system, but it's also reinforcing that training that we've done so that users are becoming more and more familiar with the system. Um, you know, making sure nothing was overlooked. You know, we've vetted out all of the business processes that you guys need to do. Um, so that is really what testing entails. And then finally is our deployment phase. And so this is typically done over a weekend. We pick a go live target date. And then the weekend before we migrate, um, you know, the rest of your data over. So this is when we bring in, obviously, inventory quantities, open payables, open receivables, any new customers or vendors or items um, that we need to add to the system. So we do that over a weekend, and then come Monday morning, you guys should be ready to go live. So we have saved several data migration tools. Um, if you are looking at the B, the Business Central uh, version of Dynamics 365, there is a GPBC link where we can pull your data directly out of GP into BC. Um, but more often, what people prefer is we provide Excel spreadsheet templates that. Um, you know, you guys would fill in and populate, and then we would import in. Those Excel templates work for both FNO and BC. So the templates themselves um, are a little bit different, but they're both Excel versions that you guys can update and send back to us, and then we import in for you. So those are our two migration tools um, that we use to move the data from your current system to another. So some tips and tricks for successful implementation. Obviously, it takes a lot of planning, um, you know, especially internally on your end. Again, we want to make sure that the return on investment is there. So, um, you know, one of the biggest success factors to a good implementation is educating stakeholders and getting buy-in from everybody because, you know, some folks are more agreeable to change than others, and so we really want to make sure that everybody sees the value of the new software and how it's going to make their life easier so that there is some buy-in and there isn't, you know, resistance to the change. Um, we like to involve end users early on. And often we like to keep everybody engaged um, and feel like they're a part of the process. 
again, it goes back to the training and, and um, you know, moving through the system, um, you know, without any hiccups or problems. Um, we do provide documentation. We provide training documentation and Visio diagrams and um, various project um, reports. We do a big fit gap analysis. We will, um, so lots of documentation is provided to you guys throughout the course of the project. <clears throat> Another helpful thing is to gather your team and clearly assign roles. Um, you know, you want the whole company to be aware and on board. Again, it's it's important to um, get buy-in from everybody because, like I said, resistance can slow things down and, and make the transition harder than it needs to be. Um, and then finally, we a lot of times push for a phased rollout, meaning initially we may want to replace just the processes that you guys are currently doing today as like phase one, get you over the hump and into the new system. So you're not losing any functionality. What you did in the old system, you're able to do in the new system. And then like as a phase two, we roll out, you know, some of the newer features um, and, you know, the processes may change a little bit. Sometimes this is a good approach because we try not to, um, you know, throw out too much where people are biting off more than they can chew. Um, you know, Chris always uses the analogy of um, crawl, walk, run. We don't want to go from crawling to running. We want to kind of ease into it so people, again, aren't overwhelmed and um, feel good about the, the transition. So that is our migration in a nutshell. Awesome. Thank you, Diane. Um, so if there are any questions at this time, please feel free to submit them. We'd be happy to answer anything you have for us. And of course, if we can't uh, get you the details you need today, we'd be happy to follow up. Um, Diane, do you want to go ahead and move to the next slide while we wait for any questions to come in? Sure. Um, I want to invite everybody to join us for a complimentary ERP fit gap assessment. If your organization is considering Microsoft Dynamics 365, um, there's a good amount of research that goes into that, and that involves your budgetary perspective, your technical perspective, and as well as your uh, business process requirements and your long-term goals for IT. Um, and so we can help get you started on the right foot in a very little amount of time, at least get you pointed in the right direction with your research in a no charge, no obligation assessment. Um, it's just one hour, a remote session with one of our consultants to help validate Microsoft Dynamics 365 for your short-term and long-term goals. Um, even if you don't go with Turnkey as your implementation provider, you'll get a lot of information about what direction to continue your research in and um, which solution might be right for you. So we do invite you to join us for a FitGap. You can register there at turnkeytech.com slash FitGap. Um, I just want to remind everybody that this webinar was recorded, so we'll send that out to you in a follow-up email. And again, if you have questions, please do not uh, hesitate to reach out to us. Diane, thank you again for presenting. Um, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. And I believe that wraps up the webinar. So until next time, I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.